create stuff once mm. and it sells over and over. So yeah, as our shifts for zero, shift for zero cost. So as our topic says, selling globally at zero cost. Welcome everyone, and today we are at Ruchira's studio. We got a glimpse of her work during our November session, and today she will be telling us more what she do and how she do it. Welcome, Ruchira. So thank you for having me. Welcome everyone for a sip of coffee online with Ven India. And Ruchira, we will like to hear from you what you do, how you do, and how you can inspire our ladies. First of all, thank you so much for having me here. It's always a pleasure. Last time our, our meet was nice because we got to know about so many women who were making a big impact on our country in various ways. And uh, today you are here and I'm very happy to have you here. Now you're coming to our question, which is what do I do? So uh, I'm a graphic designer by profession and I have slowly niched into creating craft products for people who handcraft things. So at my end, I'm only designing things and creating digital files. And I upload those digital files to my shop and those are purchased and recreated at the user's end. Okay, I like to hear more detail about it because I didn't understand much, but I just know that today's our cup is uh, uh, gifted by Ruchira to us. So thank you for that. <laughs> and what welcome. this is what she do, what's her creativity. Please explain how you do it on your shop and how people get it done, do it. Okay, so um, I first have to know the market. If I am designing something, I'm not designing it for myself. Whenever we are designing products, we make sure that we're catering to our audience because we are not buying our products, they are buying our products. Mm -hmm. So I first go ahead and research on what the current community is working on and what is coming on next. Like for now, I'm working on Valentine's Day projects because they're all creating crafts and um, things for their loved ones. Or uh, the kids are creating favor boxes for their uh, friends at school. Or they're creating, um, uh, preparing for a proposal on, on Valentine's Day. So these are the things that people craft for. So my audience is one who are crafting for themselves as well as those who are crafting for selling their things. Okay, yes. So uh, the way I do it is, I like if, if it is a, a love card that I'm designing, so I'll, I'll uh, first draw a structure and then I'll create a card and then I'll create the digital files for the card. And then I will show them that I have created this card. Like I'll show you, just give me one more. Uh, so I'm back, I'm back with my stuff, stuff, some of my stuff. So like this is a candy holder. Over there, um, they give, little tiny um these are chocolate eggs okay so uh, i didn't get you where uh, in the... usa okay in usa the, my most of my customer base is in, is in usa or in new zealand or in australia there are people who are mostly um, in these developed developed countries that they own these craft machines okay, okay. so whatever i yeah. create can be cut using tiny craft robotic machines okay. so they like a printer it prints these are cutting plotters which can cut according to the drawing. So I oh. draw these things and mm -hmm. I convert these into files, mm. like you would scan a document. Mm. And then these are uh, converted into cut lines. Mm -hmm. And then it can be cut using a paper at their end. And they can look at the video, how to assemble it. And they can assemble it at their own end. And they can give it away as um, Valentine's Day favors. Oh. Okay. So you basically want to say that you, uh, as I am visiting you in India, mm -hmm. so you are doing the work in India, but you your customer base is outside, outside India. Outside, correct. Okay. So I have to get to you this is a car. So it is a it can open up into a three D card that can stand on mm -hmm. a, on someone's desk. Mm -hmm. So it's like a display card. Mm -hmm. And people like to give things to others which can live a longer life and when they display it, it also, show, also shows the other person's love for them. Mm -hmm. So, um, this, this one, this one, this one, 3D pop-up display card. Mm -hmm. So it is first designed by me, mm. then handcrafted by me. Mm. And while I handcrafted, I also created an assembly video on how to put this together at their end. 
Mm-hmm. And then they will use their own papers mm-hmm. and their craft cutting machine mm. would cut it for them. And then they would assemble it watching my video and they can get it. Similarly, okay. there's this sign that says, Heavy love story is beautiful, but ours is my favorite. Mm-hmm. This, this is a simple design mm. that can be uh, either um, like on a, on a uh, sheet of wood, mm-hmm. they would first put a masking layer mm-hmm. of uh, thin vinyl. Mm-hmm. And they will cut that vinyl with the help of the cutting plotter and then they will stick it on top of the um, paper, mm-hmm. sorry, the wood. Mm-hmm. And then they can color it in the in the area that is left behind from the from the letters. Mm-hmm. And then they can remove the mask and they will have a sign for this. This one is engraved on a on a laser laser machine. Mm-hmm. So Nice. This is also Valentine's special. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what's your qualification, and is there any special qualification needed to do all this work? How did you learn? That is an interesting question. I am a qualified designer because mm-hmm. I have done a masters in design from National Institute of Design in the past. But uh, I would like to ensure you that whatever I'm doing right now was not taught as a software world. So. Okay. What I learned over there was the basics of design, how mm-hmm. to go about, you know, taking a concept in and converting into a product. That is what is taught over there. You know, if you want to be a, a product designer or if, or if you want to be a software interface designer, in my discipline was new media. It was all about embracing the newer disciplines around and just uh, creating something for them. So all digital things as well as all things which include uh, ubiquitous computing and uh, software user interfaces all all contribute into new media but anybody who's a uh, graduate from my alma mater would be able to take in a concept and um, use their design thinking skills and mm. create it into a product whether it is a uh, furniture whether it is a uh, software program so what i do is i take in the requirements mm. i i create things which would uh, um, invoke an emotion in somebody and I, I create craft products and not only that I create it for myself because if I want to sell it mm. I can only create so much mm. you know with just my two hands mm. so I like to share whatever I craft I share it to the world but I have it as a craft file as digital files in my shop mm-hmm. they can be purchased over and over and I don't have to ship them in person like if I have to sell this product even if it was for, for 1000 rupees mm. i will need to make it myself every single time i receive an order i will right. have to ship it mm. and all, all that is an overhead for me mm. because um, i have two kids and mm. one my, my my daughter is only only three and a half right now mm. so i'm pretty occupied mm. <laughs> the entire day so whatever time i get i i just create stuff once mm. and it sells over for zero cost so as our topic says selling globally at zero cost this is our topic today so yes, so you make it one time and so you invest your time only once in it right. and then you ship it again and again to different places right. outside India. So, uh, and anywhere in the world, I'll say, right. anywhere in the world. So only one time in uh, one time the investment is there of the time and your uh, skills and effort. and Okay. So Actually, it, before this, I used to do graphic design work for others. Hmm. And that was a service case. Mm. So I was getting money in exchange for the hours that I devoted. Okay. Right? So if I work for you for three hours, mm. I will be logging in my time and mm. you will be paying me for the for the amount. Mm. But now when I uh, do product based work, mm. so it is just and it is a digital product. So mm. I create it once mm. and then I'm I'm able to sell it over and over. So it's mm. not like I'm not selling my time. Mm. And it's like uh, your same effort is paying you again and again. Yeah. So, uh, how the ladies who are into crafting and all, they can get associated with your work? How can they relate to it? So, there's a huge market. Everywhere there's a huge market. You just have to find your right people. Mm. I feel that the pie is huge. If Mm. you are ready to go in and find for Mm. yourself, Mm. there's enough market. And people who who, who are ready to buy your things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so somebody who is knitting Mm. can create patterns for knitting. Mm. And and have a um, product that they sell, mm. which is a knitting pattern that people can download. They can even sell courses. A simple thing, 
it is as basic as that i follow a coach and she says that um for for a child who is 4 years old hmm. it is difficult to tie a knot you hmm. know a shoe knot correct but if there's a course step by step course to teach that little kid how to tie a shoe knot hmm. that is worthy for that person correct absolutely but for that person who is just starting out hmm. on how to knit their uh, how to uh, tie their shoes laces hmm. so uh, it it is not important that you are uh, an expert in your field mm. you should be knowing what you do mm. there are always people who are willing to learn from what you know mm-hmm. so you can cr- like go for for a niche that you you like you can go uh, and join those groups where people discuss more of the stuff that you like mm-hmm. and then find out what are the people looking for and then create that product for them whether it's a course whether it's a digital product so what are the groups you are talking about which groups can they join Uh, and how to find those relevant groups so uh, it happened back in 2016 mm-hmm. that i used to uh, freelance through a provider network that provider network was elance elance mm-hmm. was uh, a place where people who wanted to get something done would post a requirement that okay i would need a, a pamphlet done for my event mm-hmm. and then people who would like to do that work would go in and bid Okay. okay so it yeah. was a contract based thing mm. and uh, i would bid and others would bid and the person who has posted the job would mm. then go through the criteria and mm. then based on their priorities will decide that okay this person should get the job and then they would uh, assign that person the job and then the one when the person has finished doing that project he will send over the files and the money will be released from them mm. or online or online, online. yeah okay. so mm. uh, that network added another provider network which is odesk so elance and odesk they merged together mm. and they formed a new provider network called upwork which is the mm. current uh, mm. provider network for most freelancers mm. and it's a huge huge uh, network now previously elance when i was working for elance elance was like most of the cream of the workers were there mm-hmm. and most of the people were in the united states and i was also in united states at that time mm. so over there it was easier for me to put higher also because my cost of living was higher there mm. so uh, and my uh, customers my clients were also from the united states so it was easy for them to pay and my life was going well mm. i was at that time the number one presentation designer in the united states i used wow. to do information design projects and uh, I, i was i was good okay so <laughs> my life was good mm. but then when these two companies merged suddenly the market was filled with low ballers So mm-hmm. if I would do a certain pro- project for for um, say twenty thousand rupees, somebody in Nepal would be able to do it for two thousand rupees. Correct. And that person is good, mm-hmm. and he is able to pull that off because the cost of living there is is correct, low. Correct. Correct. Mm-hmm. So people from uh, Pakistan, people from Bangladesh, and people from India were mm-hmm. able to pull that off for a lower cost. And when that happened, people like me who mm-hmm. were on the top of their game, their game were uh, not able to sell their product because. Mm-hmm. people were going for others mm. because they even had a special also increased so mm. uh, th- that's how things happen so yes. that's when i stopped i i kept bidding for a long time and in a month i realized that okay this is not how things are going mm. are going to be i thought of launching my own website but then then the, that was an additional um, overhead overhead mm. uh, money wise mm. learning a new skill mm. and then you have to have seo Mm. so if they say if you want to hide a dead body you hide on the second page of google mm. so <laughs> so now when you are not having a website you cannot get traffic mm. and uh, you can only get so much work from word word of mouth so i decided it was time for me to shift mm-hmm. and that is when i thought okay what is the other thing that i'm going to mm. and so i like to add here that uh, she faced a challenge and she did not stop there but she moved on yeah. there's a very uh, big thing to understand that whenever you face a challenge you have to move on if you stop there the work is done it gets over there so you have to move on yes so what so, you did next um i have always been good with my hands you know i have been crafting things right from my childhood and uh, my mother is a very good crafter my grandma is a very good crafter my dad we used to sit together and create cards so all this i would say is it all started with, with my uh, parents sitting with me and crafting okay so uh, I thought so. Okay, okay, so the other thing that I'm good at is crafting. Mm-hmm. Let me craft. But then I knew that 
the industry is huge mm. and to make a mark it's not easy mm. and how would i start mm. so uh, before that i was not on facebook mm. so i joined in face facebook and i uh, went into groups mm. groups of crafters who were crafting okay and then i i um, looked at what other people were doing i looked at what was the market needing mm. i also looked at where are the people selling their stuff okay so uh, i started off on etsy Mm-hmm. Before this, I only th- I thought that Etsy was only a platform where people could sell their handcrafted things, mm. like physical stuff that they could sell. Yes. But uh, in 2016, mm. when I started uh, researching on uh, what should I do, that was in May in mm. May in 2016 that I started researching more on okay, what else can I do? So I I had this craft cutter called Silhouette Cameo One. I had it at that time. and i i joined in those communities that the people had this software still so silhouette came to one okay. and then i just saw their project what they were doing i just saw what were they wanting sometimes i even asked they asked a question saying okay so all of us are here and uh, i would like to know what are you working on next okay so they would come up with what what they are working on next mm. sometimes i'll go there and ask okay uh, which is your best seller uh, design mm. so they will tell me okay this is the stuff that is selling more So, so people are helpful that way. They yes, share their yes. books. It's only when you are willing to share. It's not that you would go there and just just harness everything and run away. No, mm. you have to give more than what you receive. Mm. So if you're going into a group thinking about you will just 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 uh, vacuum and everything that you get over there, it's not going to work always mm. because you have to be giving at at first. Mm. So even I started sharing what I've been creating, and that's how it all grew. Mm. Uh, that I started sharing my designs with them I- initially so, for for free for a very long time. Mm-hmm. I like to ask here. Mm-hmm. So these groups, what you're talking about on Facebook, do we have the Indian crafters also there, or it's only like uh, for the... in, in the United States? Like you know, Valentine's Day is not a big deal here. Mm-hmm. Not that mm-hmm. big a deal here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but United States has a culture of giving, mm-hmm. giving as in presents mm-hmm. and favors for. Um, Like in schools, mm. right from the beginning, they have a uh, teachers appreciation week. They have nurses appreciation week. They have mm. Black History Month. They have um, like their festivals, like mm. Easter, and um, like everything goes on. There's mm. a cycle of of mm. festivals that you will understand that people craft for and give gifts to each other. Mm. Even so, graduation day is also yes, yes, right, right, yeah, mm. exactly. So uh, those crafters over there were mostly from the United States. Okay, so basically, you are here, and your target market right now is uh, US. Yes, my my okay. biggest um, market customer base is in US. Okay, so um, if we associate with Indian crafters here, mm-hmm. so uh, how can they start? How did you or That maybe it was? See, if if my uh, customer base was in India, mm-hmm. I would go with it that way. Okay. I have seen people in India are doing. Small WhatsApp-based courses, mm-hmm. and they are selling. There are people who are who are selling how to create a beautiful tray using an MDF blank tray and uh, decoupage sheets. Mm-hmm. So as simple as that. And those courses are selling. Mm-hmm. There are people. There are always people who want to learn. Mm-hmm. So courses sell very nicely. Mm-hmm. There are products that sell very well. So if you are into crafting and you want to sell, make a group. Mm-hmm. Slowly and steadily, you will add more and more like-minded people. And it's not that. In the first row, you will go and say, "Okay, will you buy my product?" Mm. It doesn't work. For me also, I started off with selling, like giving away free designs. And mm. first, once they got to know me, that is when I presented them with better, better, higher, like higher uh, price products, mm-hmm. and they they were still willing to buy. Mm. So for people who want to do that over here, should have to go with a sort similar strategy, wherein they they are ready to uh, share more first, and then then go on uh, providing more value through higher higher range products. But I think people are very skeptical in sharing their designs and their craft work because they always feel that somebody else will take use of it and make more money than them. So how to come up with that fear, or uh, should we stop with that fear? That is a very mm-hmm. nice question, and I think you have also been there. All all of us who have been all. working yes. have had this fear. So uh, there are a lot of theories around. One is that um, one plus one makes seven, mm. you know, or six. Is when two shops like if you have two coffee shops, mm. it it mostly happens that you will have coffee shops 
in one place. Yes. You have the sub- entire sabji market in one place. Mm. So why, when that happens, that does not decrease the price of one. That only increases the price. Okay. Good point. But the, the second thing is that if you are the pioneer, if you are the one, if I'm the one making this car, mm. okay. Mm. If I'm the one who has designed it from scratch, mm. it is my concept. Mm. Okay. Whatever the other person would be doing, he will only be lagging. Mm. That means I can always be the visionary to think ahead mm-hmm. and come up with the next thing and they will only be copying. So that is the nice. second thing. Mm-hmm. And the third thing is uh, people don't buy products, people mm-hmm. buy offers. So you come up with an offer. So you don't raise for the lowest price. Mm-hmm. You give them a better experience. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if I'm giving you this, mm-hmm. I do not just give this. I will say, okay, I'll also add the envelope files for free. So when you get this design for, for $3 and this design for $5, but combined you paid them for only 6 Okay. So that will increase the price of my product mm. and allow me to uh, get the right right uh, price for it. Okay. So these are the three things that I would like to say to anybody who says that if there are more people around, you're going to lose money. No, it's not. Mm. It's not. You have to strategize. Strategy is important mm. and have faith in yourself. Mm. And uh, what do you think, like the uh, ladies who are at home, or not even ladies, everybody, like in COVID time, a lot of people have also lost their jobs. So many are looking for an opportunity to work from home. So is there something like uh, they can uh, understand from your business and they can start it from their place? Definitely. And how much will be the investment? Okay, uh, investment. That was interesting. The machines that I have over here are, um, are imported from the USA. Mm-hmm. And uh, the cutting machines are costly and the blades are costlier. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, you have a pet elephant and you have to feed it every single day. So it is not something that I would suggest to any crafter in India because over here, die cutting is more uh, popular. It is because you just buy the dies and then you can turn the die cutting machine and it will cut the pieces for you. But then you're limited to what that die can cut. Like if, if this design, you'll mm-hmm. be able to just make this design. This is the layered egg. This is okay. made for Easter. Okay. So uh, if you get this, you will just be able to cut this. But if you get a cutting machine like mm. mine, you will be able to create more designs mm. because you'll be able to buy more designs and just use the same blade to cut more things. Mm. So you so, think uh, uh, India has that market? India has that market. Uh, these machines are very successfully used by people who are creating, um, what are they called? Name plates oh, okay. and number plates for vehicles and science oh. so it is an initial investment and mm. people uh, who are go, willing to go all in mm. they do make their investment and and they um, actually make money out of it mm. and it is believed that within three months they, they can pay off their machines so it's, it's not that that big an investment too but if you're a crafter uh, i do not think that paper crafting can be done with these machines over here in india because the blades are too much okay but the third thing that I have, other than these two machines, is a laser cutting machine. That's also a big investment. But when you have that, it gives like it opens up everything. You know, you can you can design from science. You can design like, these ones. I'll show you. These are kitchen signs. So this is a set of three designs. Hmm. So this Let's kitchen bring is it a little this kitchen is seasoned with love. Oh. Happiness is homemade. Mm-hmm. These and then these are made here. So you can nice. tie these three together and these can be hung. Or you can just make them bigger mm-hmm. you know, and just make one sign for one one room. Mm-hmm. So uh, you can make you can make signs for this one. Mm-hmm. Nice. So this is this is MDF. Mm-hmm. You can even use acrylic to create mm-hmm. um signage like um the, the lights that glow, the signs those glow, the signs okay. that glow, mm. you can make those also. Mm. So, mm, but that's that's a lot of investment and a lot of work, and you, you also have to learn the skill to do that. Mm. So, I think I like to wrap up today's session, mm-hmm. and because it has left with many questions in the mind, sure. and we will be coming up with a second session with Ruchira. If you have any questions, you can uh, email it to us, and we have uh, shared our email ID. And she will be telling us uh, uh, from where to start. If some crafter has to begin, how they can begin with it. Right. And I would also like to add with a positive note. Like I have ended with a note that, okay, you cannot have this machine, you cannot have this machine, you cannot have, not have that machine. 
the thing is you can start with whatever you have mm. so we'll take upon this that yes. how can you start with what you have yes how to how to add up your passion mm. and how to add up your skill and how to add it together to create mm. a product or a course that mm. you can sell and uh, make money right from from your home mm. so today we are leaving you with many uh, questions in your mind we will be getting back and let you know how to start and where to start right ruchita sure thank, thank you. you so much